I don't know. It was, it was, it was, it was confusing. And I, and I felt like, you know, I was at the home opener in LA the other night for LeBron and it was, you know, it was quite the experience. Everybody was into it, even though they lost. And I was like, you know, this is, this was supposed to be the LeBron and Paul George opener. This was supposed to be them together. Yeah. Until Adam and Silver squashed it. Happened. Yeah. Adam Silver told them it couldn't happen. It's my, I, I'm all, this is my Don't favorite conspiracy it. theory in a while. He was just like, look, there's tampering everywhere. You, the you, tampering is you just is have laughable. to go back is, is beyond laughable that there was tampering. no i don't think so no the the league at the end of the day the the fact that the league got growing like you look at last year the nfl ratings shrunk the baseball ratings shrunk the nba ratings increased in an environment where where there's fewer viewers yeah like graded on a scale the nba rank, ratings going up in that year is amazing and they did it with the Knicks and the Lakers DOA. Yeah. Their fans checking out. So with the two major media markets not invested and the league still growing like that is, you know, it's untapped. And now what you have next year, the league is on the verge of something amazing from a, from a market standpoint, something they've been chasing for decades. Let's just say for the sake of argument that Durant goes to the Knicks you know, how plausible or not that is. We know that the Warriors are going to still be great and they're in the Bay. Let's say that LeBron gets a second star. Let's just leave it unnamed at that point. And the Lakers rise up now more into position to challenge with the Warriors. You put, and the Celtics are still going to be great. The the, the Sixers are still going to be great. You put, you are close to have Boston, New York, Philadelphia, the Bay Area, Los Angeles, and Houston, which is a big market, yeah. all being relevant. If only the Bulls, maybe the Bulls win the lottery and get Zion Williamson. That would be the you know oh the, 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 the final piece of the puzzle. But if if you could get the league in a place where where uh, New York, Boston, L.A., and San Francisco were all competing for the same title, it would be Adam Silver's dream. And so that's why I don't buy any conspiracy theory that that would happen. Well, that's not fun. I I uh, I will never understand why he didn't seriously consider Philly or the Lakers, and I also don't understand how the Lakers went from absolutely positively convinced they were going to get him to they didn't even get a meeting. It will never make sense to me. His agent was also Julius Randle's agent, who left and seemed like with some bad blood and took him to New Orleans. And then when you watch the Lakers now, it's like you know who'd be really good for them, Julius Randle. You know who to help them? And he's D'Angelo Russell's, D'Angelo Russell's agent who wasn't exactly treated well with the Lakers. Yeah, that. so that whole, maybe, and maybe that was a big part of it. Maybe he didn't want Paul George maybe. to go there because he didn't like the franchise. But I mean, you've dealt with many agents in your time. I mean, if a player wants to be in LA, the agent's not going to block it. True. I The best two situations for him, in my opinion, were Philly and LA. And I, I actually thought Philly was kind of the home run swing because we, especially when you watch them now to kind of be the third guy with Embiid and Simmons, who it doesn't seem like Paul George wants a lot of the attention. I think that's one of the reasons he likes Westbrook so much. I think he likes being kind of the Pippen, but the Philly I think had a higher upside and then playing with LeBron, you know, that, that brings all of its own stuff. Good and bad. Actually, I wanted to ask you about that. Let's take a quick break though. 